Hey there, board gamers, Justin R. Paint here, and today we're going to talk about some terrain. I'd like to welcome... I'd like to welcome you guys back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. If you are new here, please alpha strike that like and subscribe button. Alpha strike that button like you're trying to focus fire that, uh, that damage, those lasers, those rockets into the enemy mech, but instead, let's channel it into helping the, this channel here grow. If you're a returning viewer, thank you for tuning in as well. I welcome you back. So, with that said, what are we going to get into today? Today, I want to talk about some terrain briefly while I'm at work, and I do want to apologize ahead of time for the audio. If you hear it, uh, it's raining and we're in a warehouse, and anytime I want to film out here, something happens. Either it's really cold, it's really hot and humid, or it rains, or some combination of all three because we're in North Carolina and that's what happens. That said, today again, I'm going to talk about some terrain. So, I'm fresh back from Adepticon, and while I was there, I finally got to meet Ash Barker. Um, and if you aren't familiar, he's the guy who wrote the rules for our game Steel Rift. He also runs the YouTube channel Gorilla Miniatures Games. He has a really good relationship with Austin, uh, my boss, but I've never met Ash uh, in person. And I would have met him, I think, last year at Depticon, but he wasn't able to make it. This year, he was. Um, so not only was he able to promote our game, um, his rules said our game and our minis, uh, he also you know, works closely with other uh, companies in the industry. And I found out from him that uh, he was going to be doing some Battletech content with Catalyst proper. Um, and he reached out to me directly, uh, and he said, Justin, you know, if you want to get some of your terrain on the channel in front of the Battletech community, now is the time to paint me some up and send it to me. I'll do my best to get it in some video content for you. Um, and to that end, I found out, um, as of uh, recording this, um, he hasn't filmed it yet. If this goes up properly um, and this gets there, then uh, he will have done these segments already. If not, I'll still put it up and talk about it because those will be in something that he does. But he told me that Randall Bills was coming out to film with him. Uh, and they were going to be doing, I think, two Alpha Strike games and one uh, Classic Battletech. And the focus was going to be on trying to um, uh, have some video content to push towards the end of the Kickstarter. And I was like, cool. That's awesome. Let's get this train done quickly for you and try and get it in your hands. Now, we're from North America, not North America, sorry, we are North America, but we're from uh, the United States. He's in Canada, so there's a little bit of a shipping issue. So I rushed through this as fast as I could to get it done, and it's still going to be down to the wire. Um, that said, uh, Ash told me that um, the info he got from Randall is that really we're going to be playing a scenario where the Wolf's Dragoons were defending a Davian base. So as we get into what I've got here, um, keep that in mind, and that's going to make a lot of sense for why I did what I did. Um, and yeah, uh, let me preface this before I switch over and grab the camera and start manipulating stuff to show you what I did. Um, the decals that are on these were made in-house. We cannot sell them. Um, as I was posting this stuff on social media and hinting at what channel it was going to be for, um, people asked quite a bit, and we cannot sell them. Um, so these are Davian images that uh, Austin um, got reference material for and doctored up to make better. Uh, than whatever we found on Google, and uh, we print them in-house for personal use. Again, can't tell, we don't have rights to the IP. However, as I've been telling everyone, if you're interested in seeing more widespread decal production, uh, reach out to Catalyst Proper, and let them know that you've seen the stuff that we do, um, and voice your concerns. Um, I have talked to several people, and uh, we're trying to get our name out there as a, uh, an option to help um, meet the demand, because uh, a lot of people I talk to, a lot of people that ask, say they're having trouble getting the decals. Um, so if we're putting ourselves out there to make ourselves available, uh, should there be an opportunity to work either with Fighting Piranha proper um, to help him meet the demand um, under that license or to work with CGL to produce for them. We don't much care either direction if that's an opportunity, um, which is something we would like to do. Um, so yeah, if this is something you're interested in and you like what you're seeing from us, continue to make noise and hopefully the catalyst will notice us uh, both for decals and terrain and other future designs. Um, if you've been following me, you know I've been trying to wrangle Catalyst for a while with some terrain opportunities, and I met with them at Adept kind of about that as well. So hopefully in the future that will come to fruition. If it doesn't, uh, my designs I was working on will just get, get rolled into DRV proper so they become the battle tech official thing. So that said, got on site, side tangent. As you guys know that I do, let's go ahead and switch over to the other side, and I'll start showing you kind of what I've got to show here for you. All right, so on the table here, uh, we've got a variety of pieces that you guys have probably seen before. Um, but I'll just kind of show, go through and show kind of what I've been working on. So this is one of our motor pool buildings for my AO set, which sold really well at Adepticon. Um, and I painted these up. I wanted to do olive drab because I feel like that would be also a Davian color, but 
um, and also things I've seen. We've also seen like the blue with the, the red and white, which is kind of what we did here. This doesn't make as much sense tactically, but from a gameplay perspective on the camera, I thought the blue would look very striking on the table and be very visible. So I went with that. Um, green, especially on this map, would have been a bit more samey, even though a bit more practical. Um, but my set that I did for initial photography was green and I wanted to do something different. So I went with the blue and I think that it turned out pretty good for the speed and the time that I put into everything. Again, we had to go go very quickly on this. Um, I like some of the small details. We got little Davian symbols on here. Um, the bunkers are pretty basic. There's not a lot of decal, decal iconography. I think some of the um, probably um, coolest ones are the ones with the stuff or the areas on the side to be doing icons. I kind of thought having from above having the numbers on the buildings for maybe whatever they might represent um, on the battlefield would be cool. And I think probably the standouts in the set are going to be probably the tower, the Quonset huts, and the maybe the mech bay or mech hangers. Uh, we've got some buildings up back here in the corner I'll show you too. Those are prototypes that aren't released yet, but they will come out uh, soon hopefully. They're unreleased uh, sets I did. I really like this big Davian symbol up top. I think that's pretty cool. You know, wrap around the building here. Um, this one, it's got two-toned color from here to here. They use the same blues. The reason this is slightly different is because I did the sub-assembly, um, and I probably should have uh, checked that against this and darkened it up a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. Um, so, yeah. Now for the mech hangers. Those turned out really cool. I like that. So no denying, you know, what base is being protected or assaulted. And I think it turned out pretty cool. I like them. Uh, the thing that's going to be slightly sad is that I designed all of this and uh, <laughs> it looks better than my terrain for, for in-house use. So Ash is going to have better looking versions of my AO set than I do. And uh, had I had more time or was not on a time constraint, I probably would have tried to play some games on this for the channel before it shipped out. But, you know, here we are, had to go. Um, this was kind of cool. I wanted to do a broken fortress wall. So we had like half the giant decal and it's torn. It's like the walls were blown apart. I think that's kind of cool. Um, and we'll get into the last uh, of two things to show you. We'll show you the Quonset huts. So pretty basic on the front. The sides are cool because we have the Davian symbol. I also thought it would be cool to have kill marks. So like maybe this top one might be like mechs taken out, tanks taken out, and maybe some kind of bombing honor. You know, got the uh, like hangar number, and then the top looks really cool. I wanted it to look kind of like it had like hazard stripes, so if you you know stay clear, watch out, landing, whatever. Even if it's not practical, it looks cool. And then kind of these scorch marks. Maybe there's been some airburst, laser fire. Like the base is under assault. Looks pretty neat. And each one of these um, has a different number on it. So this one, it's gonna go from, I think, six to eight. No, five to eight, sorry. Five, six, seven, eight. So uh, the mech hangers are one, two, three, four. Uh, and then the these are just uh, slightly higher numbers. Um, but the uh, kill marks are a little different. So we had mechs, different slash marks, tank kills, different slash marks or tally marks, and then double swords, whatever that means. Kind of cool accolade. So I think these will look pretty cool on the table. They're also light, durable, very easy to handle um, and store. And they have a nice footprint on the table for mechs, you know, that might want to hide and so forth. And speaking of mechs, I brought some with me um, as a reference. I should have had these out already. I didn't because, you know, start filming and don't pay much attention until I start filming. Um, but because I actually have some, like, sword sworn uh, mechs that are uh, Dark Age era, basically like Davian, um, I have some mechs here we can, we can put out for, like, scale purposes and kind of where I was going for... Um, visuals because I think these are going to match pretty good. Sorry for the audio. I'm having to move around. Uh, but I think for scale purposes, like you know, if we're looking at the uh, the Quonset huts here, let's get this big guy out of the way. Actually, I didn't show that one. Um, so, you know, these guys have seen some of these in the battle reports before, but for scale purposes, you know, see what we got. And that's a rifleman. We got our Atlas here coming around the corner. We got our little Marauder charging in, and then a Warhammer, because why not? Warhammer is classic. Classic, right? So, I think those are cool. Uh, and again, the, these uh, we've had some questions about scale. Um, if we pop this guy down right here, um, this was designed, let's turn it so there's a little bit of light hitting it. This was designed such that it would look like an Atlas could walk out of it. 
So actually it's a little taller because you know you have a variety of height mechs and so forth. So that definitely looks like he could come out. Or if there was like um, kind of chains and scaffolding up here, it could like pull the torso off if the legs need to be repaired, whatever. That's kind of what I wanted it to look like. So it needed to be a little taller than him to look like they could actually have the machinery to handle an assault. And if it can handle assault, it can handle anything in between. That's my thought process. I know some people don't like it, um, but I designed this more from an Alpha Strike perspective, not a classic. So everything is big and scaled for the Alpha Strike in, with Alpha Strike in mind. Um, as we get into the last uh, couple of buildings, I didn't show you this one, which was kind of cool. At the top, and I think we've got a Davian and some Leal on that side. So nice little line of sight blocker, and also you know next to hop up on top. So that would be kind of cool, you know, use it, um, which again, you guys have probably seen this if you've been following the channel. If you haven't, now you're seeing. Um, and my hope was to get this out at the, around the same time Ash's video went live to showcase what I did for his channel. Um, now, finally, some stuff that you, if you've been following the channel or Death or Designs or both, that you haven't seen are these two buildings back here. Now, they're on base plates right now because they were drying yesterday with glue. So I didn't want it to glue to the mat because I could pull them back off the MDF if that was the case. But let's slide these on over here. All right. So um, this will be the first one. This is kind of like an HQ building. I like it because it's big. All right. Cool, like industrial entrance kind of thing. You'll notice some of the assets visually um, have been um, reused because I wanted everything to match. But the cool part is probably the top with the helipad, and also like it's double um, or got multiple levels, which I think is going to be cool for you know mechs going up and down if you want to get on top of the building. Uh, I don't know why an Atlas would climb up here, um, but you could. Um, and then you know, you got your little helipad, so like a VTOL could land there just for visuals. You know, if you're doing like a narrative game, things of that nature. So I really like this one. Um, it's the first one I painted up. Um, but we have to be some edits I have to do. The windows need to be a little bit tighter in for um, final production. And um, I got to do some tweaking on a few of the heights, especially this one. Um, so in this set, when it comes out, we'll have a variety of different uh, styled sizes and shapes of buildings that will match a military base. This one I kind of wanted to look like it could open. Maybe missiles come out of this. Maybe there's some kind of VTOL stored in here. You know, insert whatever your imagination can come up with. But I thought that was kind of cool, interesting shape. The problem I had with this one is it was an early prototype design that I thought I fixed, and the height is incorrect right here. I had shortened this in the design file and apparently um, did not get to the updated one because it's not shortened anymore. Um, but uh, the reason I wanted to shorten it, which would break the, the standard uh, height uh, stuff that I've been going with, is because I wanted it to be the same height as this, so anything that was not this height would match that, so these bridges could connect. And I've got it set up such that anywhere there are two of these, you can latch a bridge in between, right? And I've got uh, some well, short ones and long ones. And then it can connect in between this one and have a, a little bit more of a positive kind of uh, interface. But because these aren't the right height, this has got a little bit of a, a cant to it. It's not the end of the world, but it'll look better for final production. You can also connect it in between here, but this could slide. Not the end of the world, but if you use the sides of it, it will be a more positive interface. Um, but you know, you can use the sides of the building as well, and that'll be just fine. Same thing over here. And then at the top of the, the building, if you happen to have another uh, big one, which the set will come with two, one with a helipad, one without, um, you can bridge them uh, across from this way here. It's a little, gonna be a little tight because it's got paint on it. Yep. So that could go in there, and you could bridge another building, or you could have it cut across right here, right? And maybe the extra long one crosses and you got a big one here. So you got a nice play area that goes underneath this. This is a little short. You can still use it, but like that height to the other one would be cool. And because you could rotate the building, you could have like the jut outs inward or rotated. So you get some interesting profiles on your table. Uh, and that's kind of uh, interesting for me. And then with this one, I'm shipping this with to Ash so that he has two bridges. But you could also just kind of, you know, prop that down there if you want to. Um, or, you know, over here for whatever reason. Uh, whoops. Oops, so you could have like a little thing. I don't like that as much, but that is a thing you could do um, if you wanted to just have a bridge uh, somewhere. So, uh, but those are the two unreleased ones uh, that we'll, Ash will be getting. And again, we'll have a whole set that's got a variety of different buildings and different shapes that will uh, uh, look different for military bases. And as we wrap up here, I'll drop these guys down for scale so you can see kind of what, uh, what we're working with here uh, for these new buildings. So, 
I really like those. I think they're pretty cool, and I hope that Ash likes them as well. And with that said, folks, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, as of filming this video, I, I did have some like previews on my channel, um, pictures and stuff, social media, Facebook, Instagram, whatnot, but I didn't mention the channel that was doing this. I didn't want anyone to know who it was for until they saw it, so it'd be a little bit more of a surprise. Uh, obviously, when you see it, if you're watching this, you may have already seen the terrain before you saw his video, but you didn't know who it was for, you didn't know what they were doing. So I'm going to try and time this video going live once Ash's videos go up so that I can talk about this and I don't steal any thunder. Um, if you happen to be over here because you saw this video, awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you are here and you didn't know we put up those videos, I'll try and get links below so that you can check out my train in action on his channel. As always, though, folks, thank you so much for hanging out here. Um, if you want to help support what I do, check the description down below. Fortress Miniatures and Games for anything you can think of or maybe interested in for Battletech. If you're looking to pick up some paints, monuments, paints, the Pro Acrylic is sweet. It's my favorite. And if you want to support me at my day job, DeathDesigns.com. We got a cool, sweet coupon code down there. Get AMP10, save you 10%. As always, though, you guys know, if I don't sign off, I will continue to ramble. So we're going to go ahead and cut it here today, folks. Thank you again for hanging out. I appreciate you coming back and supporting what I do. As always, keep rolling your dice, keep painting your models, and I will catch you guys next time.